All right, so here we are with Joe Tedai, co-star of Discovery's Dual Survival. How you doing, Joe? Good, man. How you been? Pretty good, pretty good. So uh, what have you been up to? I've uh, seen a whole bunch of stuff with the Greensboro Gun Show, the uh, you know G-Code and HSGI, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, you know. What have you been up to? Yeah, man. Just been busy um, promoting some companies uh, that I believe in their product. Um, I was out in... Um, Tennessee and um, went out to uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works and that's one of the places that Tops sells their knives. Uh, met the guys there, really, really good guys. Actually made a real quick uh, four minute uh, commercial with them because they have their own um, studio upstairs actually and uh, just talked about my knife. Then I was in um, Arizona actually for a while going to a uh, covert entry course with Jericho Covert Entry, they invited me out there to go to their course and kind of give my uh, two cents about it. Very, very good course. I hadn't been to one of those in probably, good Lord, um, eight years. Wow. You know, lock picking class. But he had some really, really um, unique methods on getting into doors and getting under doors and all kinds of uh, very interesting tools that he has developed, which I can't talk about. But... Um, then I went to uh, Swansboro, North Carolina, and working with High Speed Gear. They're a uh, U.S. Um, a gear manufacturer uh, in Swansboro, which is right down the road from Camp Lejeune. Went down there, made a video with them, uh, tested out some of their gear, and uh, really, really good stuff. They have a uh, one particular item that's called a taco pouch. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Yeah, I have a bunch yeah. of them. I actually made a review yeah, of them. I love them. Yeah, great stuff. And I'm working on doing some other uh, uh, pieces of gear with them, kind of just like giving them my two cents about how to make some assault gear. So a uh, great company. Um, then I just got back uh, yesterday from the gun show in Greensboro, which was the first time I've ever been to that show. It's huge. Have you ever been to that one by chance? No. Dude, it is, it's a big gun show. I've been to a lot of gun shows. It's, it's twice to three times the size of the gun shows in Charlotte. Really? And then uh, Concord. Yeah, really, really good crowd. Uh, I was there with Liberty Ammunition, and uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Liberty Ammo. Yeah, we were if actually... Um, check it out. Yeah, we were talking about it on a live chat uh, probably about two months ago. We were uh, discussing the whole Liberty Ammo and the lightweight bullets, yeah. and, you know, it really expands all the energy within the first two inches, oh, et cetera, dude, et cetera. They actually... It's, it's so funny. Uh, one of the uh, head honchos there, uh, Matt Phillips, he's the vice president of national sales for the company, and uh, he is a mutual friend of a, of a buddy of mine. Matter of fact, my, my buddy Mike Donatelli that was killed in a helicopter crash. Um, and he called me one day and he said, hey man, check out this ammo we have. I know you've shot a lot of different kinds of ammo. And he started telling me about it. He's like, hey man, we've got a, a 50 grain nine mil round coming out of the muzzle at 2,000 feet per second. And I'm like, <laughs> gonna have to throw a BS flag on that. And he's like, I tell you what, uh, if you have time, we'll fly you down to Florida they took me down to this place called uh, the, uh, the Gilcrest Lodge. It's a really big, fancy uh, hunting lodge down in Florida. And we did gel test, you know, uh, gel block testing. I actually shot a boar at 204 meters with an M4. Real, real devastating round, man. Really, really devastating round. It's nothing that you're going to plink with. Right, right. But as far as, like, pure stopping power, uh, what it does is the technology in a round is so radical uh, PJ Marks is the guy that the, developed it. Um, when it hits, it disintegrates into fragments. So like a 9 mil round will, will fragment into like nine different pieces, and it just starbursts. And, um, yeah, you take a round of the thoracic cavity, <laughs> it's you, you over. won't survive it. Yeah. There's no way. No. Nah. Impossible. Yeah. So, uh, so you've been really busy, and on top of being busy, season four is a go. Yes, sir. Yep, season four is a go. Um, tentatively, we're supposed to leave in October uh, to start shooting. And, uh, of course, uh, that's between Discovery and the production company. But that's my timeline that they they told me to work with mid, mid-October mid till uh, mid-April. Uh, we'll be shooting. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So a lot of different places. Um, so are there any new skills you've learned over the course of, you know, since you, you know, finished up uh, season three? Um, is there anything that you really thought you had to work on and kind of, you know, you know, hone in a little bit more? Absolutely.
absolutely, man. Uh, you know, I'll be the first one to tell you that uh, working with Cody, he's the master of fire. And that is one of the four things uh, that you need to learn how to master in a survival situation, food, water, shelter, fire. Um, that's probably my weakest spot when it comes to just friction by fire or fire by friction. And so um, I learned a lot of very um, small nuances from Cody that I didn't learn in any other survival school because he's got that stuff down so cold. Yeah. He, he has got it down so cold. I just learned these finite details uh, because I'm working with him right there hand in hand. Um, but uh, that and I would probably also say uh, shelter building. You know, I knew the basic shelters, but he, he actually built uh, a dome shelter. We built it in um, the Klamath Mountains in California. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah. And it, it looked like a dome shelter. And it was incredible, man. It was, uh, we wrapped it with um, ferns and put ferns on the ground. And as, as a matter of fact, that particular episode, I really screwed us to the wall because I was carrying the wood in our backpack. And, um, you know, never really carried wood in a backpack before. And I set it on the ground while we were building our shelter. And it was just, everything was soaking wet. Right. And when we went to make fire, Lo and behold, all the moisture came up through the bottom of the rucksack and it wet the wood. So that night we didn't have any fire. But the wake built that parabola um, and the size that he made it, I got to be honest with you, man, I, I fell asleep pretty easily. Yeah. I wasn't freezing cold. It, our body heat actually kept us pretty pretty warm. Yeah, and that's a lot of stuff, you know, people, you know, about building shelters and stuff. I mean, there, there's zillions of ways to do it. And then you have to also, you know, think outside the box, you know, if you can't get the fire to go, then, you know, cuddle. Correct. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and I'll be honest with you, man, we weren't even cuddling. We were literally sitting on the outside edges of this thing, um, and just our body, he, the way he built it, yeah. uh, and he made the, 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 the entrance so small, um, I was amazed at how warm we were. Wow. Again, that, that, that's to Cody's credit. It was the design of it. And he made it just big enough for the both of us to get in there. So um, it, it's those little nuances that it's taken my survival game to the next level. And, and it's, it's because of COVID. Yeah, I think this season's going to be uh, really interesting. As far as preparing and working out, and, you know, not just working out your physique, but also working out your mindset of going into this, you know, what do you do in regard to that? You know, uh, that's actually a really good question. And, and I say it all the time, man, you know, the will to survive will always be the skills to survive. So what I do while I'm at home, and I know this sounds kind of bizarre, but like I will go out and get miserable wet, you know, uh, and get dirty. And as a matter of fact, I just went through a hike uh, through the, uh, the Uari Forest before I went out to the Greensboro Gun Show. And I got myself nice and dirty, nice and muddy, you know, and, and just, you know, spent a few hours out there um, and, and just walking around, getting my feet, you know, uh, prepared. I've done a lot. I tell you what, one thing I've done a lot of. I've worked on my cardio a lot. I was told this year um, by the executive producer to be ready physically. I, I don't know what um, they have in mind, but I, I've got a funny feeling they're going to throw some real, real curveballs at us this year. So, because when he said that, he's like, "You need to be ready this year," um, and, and I was ready, obviously, last year. For him to say that. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't know what they have in mind, but uh, they're they're definitely going to have some interesting things for us. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, um, you know, I went through a bunch of forums and stuff, kind of look up some information about how people feel about the show and everything. And you know, you come across the whole, well, this is you know, this is staged or et cetera, et cetera. You know, you want to talk sure. about that a little bit? On, I mean, I, I know from my perspective of what I do with over like 900 videos, you know, there are some times you want to find that perfect shot. So, I mean, you want to talk about you know the differences. Yeah, man. One thing I'll tell you about the show, um, and, and of course, you know, I, I've signed a non-disclosure about, you know, how they shoot the show, um, and that's their secret sauce. But what I will tell you is if one of the things that they will do is if we were moving in a certain direction, uh, maybe there is a, a beautiful waterfall over to the right or something more dramatic to the left, they will tell us, hey, you need to kind of go this way because maybe they'll have a camera set up in front of us. But as far as like where we're maneuvering to and what we're doing during the course of our movement, that's up to Cody and I. Right. Um, you know, when we're navigating and where we're going, that's up to us. Um, they have.
have to make the show visually stimulating. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. um, if we're going to miss a beautiful landmark or a terrain feature by 100 or 200 meters and they know it's there because they've got people out front, they'll, they'll have us move in that direction. But pretty much, you know, everything else, it's not scripted. Like, they're not telling us what to say and when to say it. Right. That's, that's, when they do the interviews, they're literally, we just got done doing something, and the producer will say, Joe, time to do an OTS, and they'll bring me over and start asking me questions. And, they're, and I don't know what he's going to ask me. Right. So it is kind of on the they spot. They don't tell us what the questions are going to be. They kind of catch us off guard. Right. So, Which and they is, do sometimes. You can see some of our answers are, you know, <laughs> you know, like I remember the one time he, uh, when we were in, where was that, Colorado. He goes, so what did you think about the beaver? And I said, it tastes like shit. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know what else to say, but that's the only thing I could think of at the yeah. time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know, I know what you yeah. mean. So uh, a lot of people also are saying, you know, what Cody does hasn't really changed much. Um, some people think you're a little extreme, <laughs> I guess, the way you go about things. But, I mean, I'm sure you're gonna, you guys are going to have some new tricks in line for this season, some new, you know, stuff you guys are thinking up about, you know, teaching. Yeah, I, absolutely. I've, uh, one of the things I do when I'm home is, is I study. And I've, I've said it a million times, I'm not an expert at anything. I don't consider myself an expert at, at anything. And so I'm a perpetual student, which means I have to study. And I, I study online. I read books. And, and I kind of try my own thing uh, right here. I live on 20 acres. I've got water on it. So I can, I can do a lot of different things. Um, I've actually come up with uh, a, real, a couple really cool um, things for either catching game or catching fish. And I don't want to talk about them and give it away. But uh, if we get an opportunity to be around water where there are fish, I'm going to try out one of them for sure. I've, I've, I've tried it here, and it worked. And it's something and so that I'm going to try it if we get a chance to do it, depending where we're at. Um, I'm going to give it a shot. Excellent. And something you hasn't been on there yet, right? No. I've, matter of fact, uh, I've never seen it on any survival show, and I've looked. Um, I've played back all the survival shows, and I've never seen anyone use this particular thing before. Right. So you and, know, and it worked. Yeah, that's that's excellent. I can't. It's for small fish, not yeah. for big fish. For, for like a largemouth bass or a crappie or, or something like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, because I mean, that, that is one of the... Something like that. Yeah, that is one of the skills, you know, getting getting food and... and uh, yeah. It is always interesting to see how you can do it differently, you know? There's probably a thousand ways to catch a fish, so it's interesting to see each one and how it works. Yeah, I, I you know, Discovery, they really like MacGyver stuff. Yeah. You know, you can see like with the balloon that I made. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty... It's very simple, but it's it's MacGyverish. So, right. and I kind of like that stuff. I really like thinking outside of the box. And and it, like I said, I tried it and it worked. I actually tried it right in my pond, and um, I caught a fish in about ten minutes. Wow, that's gonna be cool to yeah. see. Hopefully, you can get yeah. to use it. Yeah. So, um, uh, some people are asking about gear, and you know, when you go on set, when you go on your on your trips and your adventures. Do you take new gear to test out, or do you go solely with gear that you know, or you know how does that work with with at least on the gear? show? Yeah, like if you guys. Oh yeah, dude. Cody and I have nothing to do with the gear. Well, I mean, like um, what's on you, back, like your clothing and stuff. Oh, oh, the clothing. What, here's one thing I try to do. I don't try to overdress for the show because let's face it, if we were going to you know uh, Colorado again, where it's thirty below zero, and I was wearing you know, a North Face Summit Series, um, you know, body condom. What's the use? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I wear what the average person would wear. Matter of fact, when we were in a claim with Mount, or no, excuse me, in Romania, I had a pair of uh, jeans on. I had, everything I had on was from Walmart. Yeah, I remember that episode because you were all wet. I had nothing on that was expensive because... I want to do it the way a an average person would do it. If I was covered from head to toe in Gore-Tex and, you know, it, it what's the use? Right. You know what I mean? So that's one thing I won't do. I, I won't do that. I wear off-the-shelf gear um, that the average person could afford. Right. And that kind of adds to the experience, at least for the viewer. Yeah. I mean, if I was in, you know, we're in Romania, you know, if I would have had like super warm gear and waterproof gear, 
uh, and they poured water <laughs> on me because they did because that's how it started. It wouldn't have bothered me, but I had jeans on. Yeah, I remember you know, that episode. It took hours for that to dry. Yeah. I, I had basically a hoodie like this that I bought in Walmart, uh, and then I think I had a black sweatshirt on underneath it, and then I had a black jacket over it. Wow. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I think it's one of the one episodes where you said that was the uh, coldest you've ever been or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I was definitely hypothermic. Yeah. There was no doubt about it. I was starting to get the humbles. I was stumbling <laughs> and fumbling and, and, and you know, I, my mouth, I couldn't get my mouth to work. So I, w I was definitely there for sure. Yeah. We got a few more questions here. Um, you know, have you pulled anything from Cody's minimalist ways throughout all the episodes you've been a part of and all the time you've been with him? Is there anything you pulled from him where you're like, you know what, instead of going gung-ho with something maybe there's a minimalist way about it bro i'll be honest with you I, I, i'm not a minimalist I, I i believe that if i have to be in a survival situation or if i'm going to put myself out in the wilderness uh, i'm not going with minimal gear that's just not how i think all right you know i'm going to bring uh the gear that i feel is necessary for me to to survive in that environment whether it be a day or two days or a week, it's going with me. Right. Um, you know, Mother Nature is a serial killer. And I'll tell you right now, for those that tempt Mother Nature, yeah. she'll stick it up your rear end with a candle on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, there, I, I, don't, I don't do that minimalist thing. That's just not me. Right. If you're, you're going to go, then uh, you better go all out. Yeah, if you're going to go, go big. I, I mean, credit to Cody. You know, he can do it, and he's comfortable doing it, but... My training, with my background, and you know, if, if you're gonna, if you know you're gonna put yourself in that environment, be prepared for it. Right. You know? And talking about being prepared, you know, I know I saw a video about you uh, talking about your bug out bag. You know, what do you think the three most important things there are to have in, say, like an emergency bag, like in your car or at home, or you know, what what three items do you feel sure, are man. the top? You know, and, and again, it depends your environment. I live in a woodland, uh, a woodland setting, um, but depending on where you live, um, right. In my bag, I've, I've got numerous, and I've made a video off, obviously, with it. I have new, numerous items. Um, the biggest thing I would tell you is um, I would want to have some food for sure. I have uh, power bars and power gel, um, and I have uh, stuff to di disinfect water and to boil water. My idea is that if you have to get from point A to point B on foot, mm -hmm. you're going to need the energy to get there. Now, granted, you know, there's other ways to get food. In that kind of a situation, I'm not going to talk about that. But, you know, if it's that bad, uh, I will find food. Uh, I also have, um, you know, I, I, I obviously if you're bugging out um, and you link up with someone or maybe with your wife or, you know, whoever you are, your girlfriend, um, it's good to have radios. I have two radios with that uh, inside my bug out bag. Um, but, you know, two or three items, you know, again, I, I wouldn't just have two or three. I mean, if you're going to have a bug out bag, you know, fill it. You right. know, I wouldn't say, you know, go get a, you know, a, a large Alice <laughs> rock and, and fill it full of 90 pounds of crap because most people aren't going to be able to carry it. Right. But, um, you know, I, I've got numerous items, obviously fire starting stuff, uh, shelter stuff, but everything's multi-purpose. Yeah, I'll, you know, you can use things for different things. Um, you know, and I have some other stuff in my bag that I'm, I'm not going to talk about that, uh, that I personally... Uh, would want to have in a situation that um, uh, I feel that I would need. You uh, know? I was going to ask and, you and about one. Quite frankly, you know, I, I feel that if you're going to be bugging out, you better have a firearm with you. Yeah. Whatever your choice of firearm is, you know, whether it's a pistol or a shotgun or an M4, you know, um, if you're in that situation and it has gone to that, uh, if society is degraded to that point, where you are bugging out, you better have a way to defend yourself. It's all, I mean, it's also multi-purpose with, you know, food. Exactly, exactly, man. So, you, you know, take down game, things, so. whatever. Um, but uh, when when uh, when things go bad like that, people, uh, there, there's a saying, they say, uh, 72 hours to animal. You know, people will start reverting back to very animalistic ways because, you know, you're, you're taken out of your... Uh, environment and place in an environment we have to survive, people will resort back to that. So, and people are capable of doing some pretty uh, nasty stuff when they're put in, in, in a situation, you know, that they're not used to. Yeah. Especially when their life hangs in a balance. Yeah, yeah. I, get, I can definitely yeah. understand that. So, we got another question here, and then we have um, real quick uh, fan questions that we uh, received today. Yep. Um, so, 
as far as material goes for the show, you know, how hard is it to keep up with keeping the viewer, um, you know, the, their attention span there with, with what's going on? You know, how hard is that when you guys are out there? Are you thinking about, you know, how are we going to make this interesting? Or is it just on the fly seat of your pants? Yeah, we, Cody and I never think about that. That is the magic of editing. And um, our executive producer, Brian, that uh, works for Original Media, that's his job. Cody and I's job is all we are to do is to act out the scenario that we're in. They will film the whole thing, and based on what they feel the audience wants to see and what wants to hear, they will edit it out. But, yeah, we never think about that. We just do our thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, here's, uh, here's some fan questions that we got. Uh, first okay. one is, what are your thoughts on Tier 1 guys being more on television and movies compared to the past? Oh, boy. Um, you know, here, here's, I'll, I'll say this. I'll, I'll keep my comment short. More Spec Ops guys, whether they're uh, Army Special Forces, or SEALs, or Delta, or Dev Group, or the unit I was in, um, jobs overseas are getting harder and harder to come by. And... You know, a lot of guys don't like TV. They come from the military. They, you know, they, they just don't like it. They don't like the media, and, and I understand that. But there's a lot of good guys out there, man, with a lot of knowledge that uh, I feel could share with the public and, and really make a good impact. Do I think it's good or bad? To me, um, a man's got to provide for his family, and if that's the route that they, they choose, um, I don't see anything wrong with it, as long as. They are not talking about sensitive stuff, TTPs, right. uh, you know, any kind of thing that um, might get into the hands of the bad guys. That is a no-go. Right. All right. So um, let's see here. How about Snake River, Idaho? Someone wants to see you guys go to Snake River. So I guess that's more of a statement. Snake River. Is that where Evil Knievel jumped over, the Snake River Canyon? Um, I think so, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Here's the problem, and I found this out, and I, I didn't know this, but... For us to shoot in an area, they've got to get land uh, use permits. Right. In any kind of state parks, and very, very difficult to get. Yeah, someone was asking that question, too, as far as, you know, why don't we see more USA, you know, uh, locations. So that kind of answers that question, That's too. That's why. Because they've got to get land use permits, and Cody and I cover pretty big distances. If we were just working in a small area... That's a different story. Yeah. But we need a big expanse of land to do what we're doing. Um, and, and getting land permits is very, very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Uh, the next one is a statement. They want to see more beard. More what? More beard. They like your beard. More beard? Yeah. They want to see a, more beard, I guess. I don't oh. Know. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, could, I could grow my beard out a little bit more. But, I, you know, I'm... Tr I don't, I don't want to look like, you know, um, Duck Dynasty. You right. Know, that those guys got their look. Uh, and I've met, matter of fact, I did a speaking engagement with uh, Tim Tebow, um, Willie, and Jace from, um, from Duck Dynasty. Really nice guys. Super sharp guys. And, uh, but that's just not my look, dude. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just not my look. Yeah. I uh, keep it trimmed, you know, um, relatively short and, you know. And quite frankly, Discovery doesn't want me to be clean shaven. Um, they quote unquote, yeah, too much of a baby face. So I'll be wearing this for a while. Yeah. So if you go into the cold locations, you're gonna have a whole bunch of icicles again. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I had some frozen snot on my uh, mustache. That was kind of embarrassing. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's surviving. So another question is: Are you gonna go barefoot this year? No. Not. Not even a chance. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, not my thing, brother. Yeah. So let's let's send on this note. Have you found the guy that was driving that was a jerk to you guys at the end of the last episode? No. Uh, and as a matter of fact, what was funny, and, and they, didn't, they didn't catch it, uh, <laughs> there were more people uh, that drove past that was actually even funnier. Oh, really? But they, they, they turned the cameras off at that point, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you got to remember where we were uh, in that particular part um, of the Klamath Mountains. There's a lot of people that grow marijuana. 
illegally. And so and you got a lot of, I don't want to say hillbillies, but you've got some, those kind of people, redneck type guys hanging out there. And they probably didn't appreciate seeing Cody and I walking down, especially seeing Cody um, getting ideas of, you know, who he might have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I can understand that. It's a beautiful place. I'd never been there before, but wow, very picturesque. Yeah. Very, very, very picturesque. Yeah, man. Yeah, cool. it looked pretty cool in the uh, in the episode. So that's yeah, all the yeah. that's all the questions we got. You want to say anything to the fans or anything, and let them know about season no, four. Hey guys, you know, thank you for watching the show. You know, so and um, what I tell people is, you know, don't watch the show and judge Cody to be right or wrong or me to be right or wrong. We are both right and wrong. What they want, what Discovery wants, is for you, the viewer, if you were in that situation, what would you do? Not what would Cody do or what I would do. What would you do? They want you to think. It's a show to teach people. It's not a train wreck show where people are screaming and yelling and all that drama BS. It's to try to teach people, if you were caught in a situation, what would you do? Right. And that's our goal, to show two different views on survival – Mine coming from the military and government special operations aspect, and Cody coming from the purest, you know, the survival, civilian survival expert, and, 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 and kind of get a feel from the extremes, where do you fall on that, you know? Like, I, as some guy told me when I was at the Greenboro Gun Show, he's like, dude, you were crazy to sleep on the ground in South Africa. Cody made the, I'm like, that's great, that's what I want to hear, because I want people to think, you know what? I wouldn't have done what Joe did, or I wouldn't have done what Cody did. It's getting you to think. So, and I'm not again. I'm not right or wrong, or either is Cody. It's 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 the way we view the situation. Right. And uh, so, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, it goes back to what you said that you're not an expert. Yeah. Yeah, and they didn't want an expert. I mean, I know I know enough about survival to be dangerous, and uh, you know, it's my whole thing is the mentality of getting out of there and doing whatever I need to do. Like when Cody and I were in Romania, Cody wanted to sleep in the wood line about 50 yards. And I'm like, dude, you can't see anything here. I could park my carcass right here and I could see for 10 miles. Right. I was good. I built a fire and yeah, I mean, I was warm, you know, it drizzled a little bit, but again, I didn't see anybody. We, you know, that next morning, you know, I was out there making my X bigger, but it's all about the mission. I'm mission focused, mission focused. Um, and you know, I never had fires in special operations. I can assure you, when I was in Afghanistan or out in the, you know, out in the Hindu Kush mountains, we weren't building fires. Right, right. That was a luxury, you know, that I never had. So to me, having a fire, eh, you know, don't really need it. Right, right. You know, don't really need it. Yeah, and I think that's what makes the show interesting, and I think that's what the uh, what they're going for when they uh, created the show. Correct, and you're absolutely right, man. They were looking for the the military, uh, the the high end special operations military survival minded guy, and and the purest of Cody, and, and where those two you know crossed, you know that's where you get your, your little bit of drama and your head button, and, and that's what the show was originally uh, designed uh, to be. Right, right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, man. All right. Well, thank you for taking the time out to uh, do the interview. Yeah, brother. Yeah, it's always been fun, and uh, I'm sure we'll cross paths in the future once we get the uh, yeah, season four. Yeah, anytime we do an interview, man, I love your interviews. A lot of people comment on my Facebook page about them, and and they've talked to me at, at other events, and they, they really like your your interviews, man, because you ask very pertinent questions, and, and and that's what I like. I like that. Great. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'll go ahead and get this up, and uh, we'll get it out to them. Cheers, man. You almost All look right, like man. you look like the Undertaker from uh, WWF. Yeah. <laughs>